This is a tutorial for the lab Finding Your Way Around the Night Sky. This lab shows you how to identify a few bright constellations in the night sky, as well as how to estimate the brightness and angular height of stars in the sky. This lab uses ideas from the online lecture O2 Sky, so you should make sure you review that lecture, especially the section on how the motion of the Earth affects your view of the sky in the course of a night. There is quite a bit of preparation to do before you go out observing, so make sure you assemble your equipment and plan your observing well before it's time to go outside. To start with in this lab, we're going to need a map or guide to the sky. This is a bit tricky since the Earth is constantly moving, so what we can see in the sky is constantly changing. Fortunately, there are a couple of different options we can use to figure out what will be up at the time and date we're planning to observe. One option is to use a planetarium app for your phone, tablet, or computer. These applications, such as Starry Night or Stellarium, can show you views of the sky from any time or place. Instructions either come with these apps or are available online. Take the time to play with the app and learn how to set things like the time, date, and location. An alternative is to create a planisphere. These can be purchased online or you can make your own. Here is a link to a template you can print out and make. Print out both the template pages and cut out the star wheel and body. It works on paper, but if you can print it onto thin cardstock, that's more stable. Cut out both parts, and don't forget to cut out the gray part of the body. Then fold the body along the line and slide the star wheel between the front and back halves so that you can see the stars through the window in the body. The instructions suggest using a slot pin fastener to hold the pieces together but there are other options that work as well, including a push pin pushed into a cork. Make sure the star wheel can spin around its center point. The instructions and template include an optional transparent overlay, but we don't really need that for this lab. To use the planisphere, turn the star wheel so that the date you are observing lines up with the time you observe on the body. Notice that the directions labeled on the body look reversed from what you're probably used to. If north is at the top, then west is to the right rather than the left. That's because this is designed to look up at the sky rather than down at the ground. If you hold it up over your head, then you'll see the directions really do line up the way they should. Before you go out observing, you'll need to decide what you're going to look for. Whether you're using an app or a planisphere, set the date and time to when you'll be observing. Remember that if daylight savings time is in effect from April through October, you'll need to set the time on the planisphere back by an hour. Usually, apps will make this correction for you. Look at the view of the sky and find as many of the constellations from Table 1 in the lab as you can. If you're using an app, you may want to use a wide field of view so that you can see the whole sky at once. You won't find all of the constellations from the table up at once. Usually two or three will be visible at any one time. Use the app or planisphere to decide what part of the sky each of the ones you can see will be in. If it's near one of the horizons, then it's best to give a direction like south or northeast. If it's near the center of the view of the whole sky, then you should say it's straight up. Also list when and where you'll be doing your observing. Once you know what you can observe, make sure you have a copy of the relevant sky charts from Globe at Night. These are the links in the table. These will help you identify the constellation and decide how much light pollution you have in your area. One other place you can look to see some of what's up in the sky is the earthsky.org site linked here. It gives a quick summary of a few of the things that are visible in the evening sky. 
Also remember to put together your astrolabe. This is described on the next slide. One other piece of equipment we'll need for this lab is a simple astrolabe. Here are links to a couple of different models. Note that one of them calls it a sextant. I'm going to describe how to put together the first one, which uses a protractor. The other one works in a very similar way, but you have to print out the protractor on paper. Starting with the protractor, tape a drinking straw to the straight side. Then, put a string through the hole and tie a weight like a washer on the string. To use the astrolabe, just point the straw at a bright star and look through it so that it's lined up on the star. Let the string hang down and mark what angle it is lined up with on the protractor. The angle from the horizon is 90 minus that angle. Picking an observing site generally involves some amount of compromise between what is practical and what is ideal. While darker sites let you see more stars, they're often hard to get to if you live in or near a city. Also, if you're not used to finding your way around the sky, a very dark sky can have so many stars that it's hard to identify what you're looking at. So here are some things to keep in mind as you pick where you want to go observing. First, you should feel safe where you observe. If you're going out at night, it helps if you can go with other people. And don't go into places where you feel threatened. Also, don't trespass or go into places that aren't open to visitors. You should try to avoid places where there are bright lights shining in your eyes. You won't be able to see the stars unless you can get your eyes used to darkness. Sometimes, if you can find a moderately dark area, like a park, then a conveniently located tree can block out the nearest light sources. You also want to be able to see a reasonable fraction of the sky. If you're around a lot of tall buildings or trees, you may not be able to see much of the sky. An open area like a playing field, park, or even a parking lot, provided it's safe and doesn't have many lights, can work. Finally, remember to keep an eye on the weather, and don't try to observe if it's fully or mostly cloudy. If you can avoid the time of the full moon, that helps as well, since the moon will make it hard to see the stars in that part of the sky. Remember to bring your planetarium app or planisphere, as well as your astrolabe. Also, make sure you have access to the magnitude charts for the constellations and the finder for the North Star. It's good to have a light source, and if you can make it red, that helps your eyes stay dark adapted. Even putting some thin red paper over the light can help. This gets more important the darker your observing site is. If the place you're observing from already has a lot of light, then don't worry about having a red light because your eyes won't get that dark adapted anyways. Also, make sure you dress warmly enough for the weather. You're going to be standing in one place for a while, so it's easy to get chilled, especially if Once you get out to your observing site, you're going to want to start by identifying a few bright constellations. Your planisphere or planetarium app will be important here. As you scan around the sky, look for simple patterns of bright stars. The lab write-up mentions a few of these, including the Belt of Orion, the Big Dipper, which is part of Ursa Major, the head of Leo, and Cygnus. Again, only some of these will be up at any one time, so use your map to help you decide which of these are worth looking for and which direction to look in. Once you've found one of these constellations, use your app or planisphere to find others near it. This star hopping technique often involves looking for alignments of stars in one constellation leading towards another, such as the way the stars in the bowl of the Big Dipper point towards the North Star in Ursa Minor. Depending on how dark your sky is, you may be able to pick out the patterns of several constellations, or just a few. 
try to at least find the constellations that you identified in Table 1 that would be up when you're observing. Select one of the constellations you found from Table 1 and compare what you are seeing in the sky with the magnitude charts for that constellation. Note that magnitudes are defined so that bigger numbers mean fainter stars. So the magnitude 2 chart shows you stars that are as bright or brighter than magnitude 2. The magnitude 5 chart shows stars that are 5th magnitude or brighter. Hence, there are many more stars on this chart. If the sky is very bright, you may only be able to see down to second magnitude stars. Well, if you have a dark sky, you may see stars all the way down to magnitudes 5 or 6. This gives a measure of how bright the sky is where you are observing. Record the constellation you're observing and list which magnitude chart best matches what you are seeing in your night sky. Also, have a look at the Globe at Night website linked here and see if they are running one of their observing campaigns. Globe at Night relies on citizen scientists to submit observations so your data can help them measure light pollution worldwide. The other measurement we need to make is of the angular height of the North Star, Polaris. Note that the North Star is not the brightest star in the sky, though it is a fairly bright star. Its most important property is its location, within one degree of the North Celestial Pole. This means it stays stationary in the sky as the Earth spins. As you look towards the North, start by finding the Big Dipper, which is part of Ursa Major. All the stars in the Big Dipper are bright, so this is a fairly easy pattern to find. Once you've identified the Dipper, imagine a line going through the pointer stars, the two stars at the end of the bowl. Follow this line on until you come to the next bright star. That's the North Star. Once you've found the North Star, use your astrolabe to measure its height above the horizon. Follow the steps we described when we introduced the astrolabe a few slides back. Now that you've completed the skills part of this lab, the next step is to start doing your own observations. For each of these, Start out by making a hypothesis of what you expect to find and why, and then do your observations to see what you really find. Here are some suggestions of things you can try. If you can see at least three of the constellations from Table 1, repeat the measurements you made in the sky brightness part of the lab with the other two constellations and decide if the result is different in different directions. Does it matter how high in the sky the constellation is? Is the sky in the west brighter than the east, or vice versa? You may have to measure the angular heights of the constellations as well. See what other constellations you can identify in the sky. Use your app or planisphere to predict what you might see, and then try to observe those constellations by eye. You can either sketch or photograph the constellations to document what you saw. But if you're sketching, make sure you only show what you're able to see, not what they look like in the app. Also, see the comment below on cameras. Can you measure how fast the Earth is spinning? Look at a star that is low in the east, and then measure its height again at a later time on the same night. By comparing the amount the star moves with the time between observations, you should be able to figure out the Earth's spin rate. If you're a photographer, do you get the same sky brightness results you got with your naked eye? Note that most handheld phone cameras have trouble photographing anything as faint as a constellation. But a digital SLR camera with a tripod can give you great night sky images this way. Finally, you're welcome to come up with your own suggestions for experiments you can try while observing the night sky. I recommend that you check with your instructor first to see if it's practical. Remember, whichever experiment you do, that you will need to record the question you're asking, 
your hypothesis on what you expect and why, a detailed record of what steps you took, any data you recorded, and whatever conclusions you came to. Also remember that it's okay if your results don't match your hypothesis. That happens all of the time in science. So enjoy your evening of observing the night sky, and let your instructor know if you have any questions.